Good morning. I am so glad to be here. I've been hearing about this center for years, particularly the music, uh, and some about Lee. <laughs> I, I knew Lee at Unity of Dallas, and then he sort of disappeared. And then we heard he'd become a minister. What? Lee? And then we heard he'd started his own center. So I had to see it for myself. And it's wonderful. The energy is wonderful, and I'm glad to be here. It's always fun to be back in the Dallas area, briefly. <laughs> and then I just flee back to the hills. Wimberley's outside of Austin. So are any of you going through transition in your life? Or maybe you know someone who is? <laughs> I saw a hand back there. You've probably heard that when one door closes, another one opens. But I've learned it can be hell in the hallway. You're in the hallway when something has changed and you know your life will never be the same. You just don't know what's coming next. I first talked about this years ago and I was astounded by the reaction. People came up to me afterwards saying, yes, I'm in the hallway. Now I have a name for it. And they were also really grateful to be reassured that there is a doorway out and there is light on the other side. So if you think about transitions in your life as a hallway, it falls naturally into three parts. What put you in the hallway? What do you do while you're there? And how do you get out? Notice getting out is not the first thing to work on. A lot of bad decisions can be made in a panic to feel better. We'll come back to that. So what puts you in the hallway? Uh, it could be the death of a loved one, any kind of loss, requires you to adjust to a new way of life. Divorce, losing a job, going bankrupt. Uh, becoming a caregiver can turn your life upside down. Sometimes a door slams suddenly, you, just, you get a phone call with terrible news or a scary diagnosis and everything has changed. Sometimes the door creaks shut. Maybe you know it, your child will be leaving home or you're planning to retire. When you know it's coming, there's a hallway up to that event and then another hallway afterwards. Some hallways are chosen. Anytime you change jobs, move to a new city, you're in a place of uncertainty and that can be uncomfortable even though you chose it. I chose the hallway when I left a career as a news reporter to go to ministerial school. And I was terrified, even though I knew it was my path. That was a long period of uncertainty. Some hallways are entirely within you. Sometimes we call this divine restlessness. You know there's something more. You know something in your life has got to give. You just don't know what yet. You're being called higher spiritually, but it can feel like wandering in the wilderness. Entire groups can go through hallways together. Think of an office staff that's waiting to find out which ones of them get laid off. Or a city where there's been a mass shooting or a natural disaster. You might remember that in Wimberley, where I live, last Memorial Day weekend, there was a massive flood. Homes were swept away, people were swept away. And it changed the life of our town for good. Then there was a second flood in October that was almost as bad. So we're still sorting out what's next. Group hallway. There's a type of hallway I didn't realize until people started telling me I was leaving this out. Call it the endless hallway. I hear it from families where someone is mentally ill, or maybe a child has Down syndrome, or something that's not going to change. I mean, caregiving itself is a long hallway, but for most people, it will eventually end. For some, however, the situation won't ever change or get better in their lifetime. And the only door to be opened is within, to find peace and acceptance. It's hard to hear about these things, but I encourage you to feel whatever you feel in the hallway. Well, feel it now or dredge it up in therapy 10 years from now. Yes, it hurts. Yes, your life might never be the same. And no, you don't know what the future holds but you can lean into the pain. And I know that's easier said than done, but people who move through the hallway successfully move through pain. There is no way around it. Become willing to be uncomfortable 
in the interest of your own spiritual growth. It's tempting, though, just to look for the first doorway out. And I said we'd come back to that, that getting out is not the first thing to work on. So let me tell you a story. There's a woman in my church named Judith. Her husband died in 2011. He was handsome, charming, a painter, an Irishman. Uh, he died of cancer, and she took care of him at home to the last breath. And then, of course, she was in the hallway, and she was miserable. She said she wished she had died with him. Now, she was not actively suicidal. She was just wondering why she was still on the planet. Then she started thinking, which might have been a mistake. She was thinking, well, I'm used to taking care of someone, so I'll move my parents in with me. <laughs> she thought, if they're here, I won't be lonely or sad. Well, Judith was about 72 at the time, so her parents were in their 90s. And as soon as they arrived in her house to live, she remembered she had never gotten along with them. <laughs> and they were just as critical and demanding as they had always been. So she gave up pretty quickly and moved them to an assisted living facility nearby. And then the staff was constantly calling her. Her parents were just as hard on the staff as they'd been on Judith, her mother accused the staff of stealing. Her father thought he was being poisoned. The facility basically kicked them out. So they went home to live in another city independently, just went back to their lives. And Judith was alone again. So she started thinking. Online dating. She had a date with one man who said, I could fall in love with you and offered to fly her to Las Vegas. And she thought that was a bit much after an hour together. <laughs> Turned out his wife had died just a few months before. They were both trying to avoid the hallway because they didn't want to face those feelings of loss and emptiness. It is not easy just to sit there in your feelings when it feels so bad. There's a spiritual author I like named Mirabai Starr, and her 14-year-old daughter was killed in a car accident. And Mirabai called her hallway a time of radical unknowingness. But she vowed to the daughter who had died, I will honor you by not turning away from this fire of grief. This fire of grief. Every hallway includes grief because something has been lost. So feel whatever you feel and remember to let other people support you. We'll all be in the hallway at times. We can help each other through it. So you're in the hallway. Now what do you do? The early hallway is a terribly vulnerable time, mainly because it's so easy to beat yourself up. Why didn't I see this coming? Why didn't I take better care of my health? Why wasn't I more careful with money? And you could even ask, how could God let this happen? You see how we create our own hell in the hallway with our thoughts? It doesn't have to be hell. It can be a time of visioning infinite possibilities. But most people don't start there. That might not be your first reaction. I think it's important to know that the spiritual work of the hallway does not depend on the circumstances that put you there. And it's true not all problems are the same. Death is different from divorce, is different from job loss. And over time, you'll address the specifics of your situation, like looking for another job. But the spiritual work is the same, no matter the circumstances. And the spiritual work is going to sound pretty basic to you. I have a friend who's a practitioner. She dutifully bought the book when it came out, and a few weeks later, she was going through a tough time, and she noticed that book staring up at her from her nightstand. She knew she was in the hallway, so she picked up the book and started reading it, thinking, well, I know this. I know that. Well, I've taught this. And then she asked herself, yeah, but am I doing it? Spiritual principles are pretty basic. They're simple, but not easy. And I don't believe there are advanced spiritual laws. 
The advanced courses are provided by your own life when you apply the same spiritual principles to new and different situations. So no matter how long you've been a student of truth, no matter how long you've been on a spiritual path, the question always is, how's your life working? Take the spiritual principles you know and apply them during your time in the hallway. It starts with acceptance. You see that a door has closed and latched, so you turn around and look at where you are now. Ah, I'm in the hallway. It really did happen. Okay, now what? Here is my gentle suggestion to help you accept whatever has happened. Just consider that it might be happening for you instead of to you. What shows up in your life is there for a reason, and somehow it is for your highest good. It's happening for you. And for me, that shifts the question. So, okay, if this is happening for me, then where is the good? What gifts is this bringing? And you might see the good in small ways at first. The friends who check on you, the love you feel from others, maybe the, a new depth in your prayers. And the good won't stop. Everything that happens in your life brings gifts and answers your soul's deepest desires. We draw to us exactly what we need in this lifetime. Most of it unconsciously. But when we make it conscious, miracles start to happen. So there's a woman named Brenda who is one of many people I know who's been through cancer and said later, I wouldn't wish it on anyone else, but I also wouldn't trade the spiritual growth it brought me. She says for a long time after she was diagnosed with breast cancer, she was stuck in why me? Because she already knew we create our reality, and she was asking, why would I create this? About four weeks into chemo, she woke up one morning and realized, if I'm going to heal this, I have to take responsibility for creating it. Now listen, that doesn't mean she wanted cancer. It doesn't mean she sat around thinking about cancer until she got it. It also doesn't mean that she quit all her treatments to just affirm and meditate herself well. It was about becoming a co-creator with God, consciously drawing on that one presence and power within her. So she would ask herself, am I really being positive? Am I really taking care of myself? Am I listening to messages from my body? And she put her spiritual tools to work. She released the outcome and just focused on each day, making a point to appreciate every moment. So if she could get from the bed to the sofa that day, she was grateful. And she said she started feeling compassion for every person she met. Brenda got well. But even if she hadn't, living in appreciation and compassion is pretty much the highest spiritual plane we can achieve. I was surprised how many people who told me about going through a physical illness said they had to take responsibility for getting well, for creating their own health. And did you notice how Brenda let go of the outcome? Acceptance leads to surrender. Our pain is in the resistance. It's in saying, this is not how things should be. I've about decided surrender is giving up the stubborn belief that life should be fair or make sense in any given moment. Sometimes surrender comes after life gets so bad there's nothing left to do. It can happen during a screaming meltdown, but it can also happen slowly and quietly. And I'm not sure you have to hit bottom to surrender. Surrender is, is feeling a sense of peace and trusting that all is well no matter how things turn out. And you can choose to believe that. So acceptance, this is the way things are now, and surrender, all is well, even if I can't see it, there is good for me here. Another spiritual tool to use in the hallway is forgiveness. Lee is planning a class on forgiveness. If you're feeling stuck in the hallway, that would be a great class for you. 
because no matter what put you in the hallway, you probably have someone to forgive. The boss who fired you, the spouse who walked out, maybe a doctor missed an early diagnosis, maybe you need to forgive your parents for needing so much care at the end. The Greek word forgive means to untie the knot. We have to untangle ourselves from the past before we can move forward. And you know, forgiving does not condone the act. There's a story in the book about a woman who forgave the man who raped her. He was a stranger. And it was not okay for him to do what he did, and she's glad he's in prison. But she also knew it was not okay for her to hate. She didn't want to go through her life letting one event or one sick man control her. So gradually, over time, she forgave him. She didn't even realize she had forgiven until she took some teddy bears to a rape crisis center one day and noticed she wasn't feeling anything. Her stomach was not in a knot. She was healed. She was free. Forgiveness frees you. And, of course, prayer is a crucial part of the hallway. One man who was in a coma for nearly two months said later he could feel people praying for him. He said it felt like a bottlenose dolphin might nudge a drowning man toward the surface. So I can offer you two prayers for your spiritual work in the hallway, and I'll warn you they are powerful. The first one is reveal what needs to be revealed and heal what needs to be healed. Actually, you could spend your whole life working on what comes out of that one prayer. Reveal what needs to be revealed and heal what needs to be healed. And then the other one is, lead me where you need me and speak to me in ways I cannot possibly misunderstand. Oh, then watch what happens. If your life is like mine, you'll end up in unexpected places doing things you never thought you could or would want to. So you see, your time in the hallway is never wasted. You use it for your growth and learning, and it can become a pivot point for your life. And what everyone wants to know, how do you get out? Well, let me ask you first, are you sure you want to get out? Because the hallway can become pretty comfortable. Some people install carpet and air conditioning. You might be getting lots of sympathy and attention while you're in the hallway. You might be stuck in telling your story. It's become your identity. You might feel guilty about moving on. My friend Judith, whose husband died, said, what if I get to the end of the hallway and forget him? She was afraid that creating a new life for herself meant losing him and all those memories. And of course it doesn't. Leaving the hallway also requires some decisions, like answering the question, what do you want? Because you are the creator of your experience, and you get to design your life always. So here's what I know for sure about leaving the hallway. Consciousness shifts first. And by that I mean your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, whether you're aware of them or not, rise to a new level. You expand into a new awareness. You might not see changes in your circumstances yet, but life will start to feel different. You'll notice you're looking forward more than back. And you'll start to ask yourself, what do I want? This is where you get to pull out all the fun spiritual tools. Write a vision, imagine your new life, set intentions and let the universe worry about how to make it happen. When I coach people, it's mostly about how to get out of the hallway how to design whatever they want behind the next door. And that's what we'll focus on in the workshop this afternoon. And I'm very aware that I'm saying, you can create a life you love right after I told you to surrender and let go of the outcome. It's both and. I don't know how to explain it except that the spiritual path is full of paradoxes. Our job, is to create the conditions for an abundant life. And it's just like preparing a garden and planting the seeds. We're not in control of how the sun and soil and rain combine to bring those seeds out of the ground and turn them into flowers or vegetables. But we can create the conditions for that 
flowering, and we decide which seeds to plant. Once you set an intention, exactly the right people will show up to guide you, ideas and money will materialize, and doors will fly open most of the time. There's a whole chapter in the book called, Why Isn't This Working? One woman said, what if you try to follow your bliss and your bliss doesn't want you? Isn't that sad? So you probably can expect delays in the hallway, although sometimes everything falls into place so fast your head will spin. But if you face delays, remember delays themselves can be a form of guidance. Sometimes a delay gives you time to realize you're asking for the wrong things. There's something else you really want. Or maybe a delay is necessary to line up the people and circumstances you need. And delays can be caused by the blocks in us, the thoughts and beliefs that hold our good at bay. Blocks like fear. You might be afraid of change. You might be afraid of failure and afraid of success. You might not believe you're worthy of what you want. So there's more inner work to do. And that's okay. Don't worry if the process is slow. Consciousness has to shift first. Inner change precedes outer change. That's why we do this spiritual work in the hallway, so we can open the next door onto what we really, truly want. My friend Judith, whose husband died, finally went through all the sad and lonely feelings she'd been trying to avoid. And she let the universe know what she wanted. She didn't want to be alone. She would love to have another man in her life. And one day... A guy she'd known in high school called and said he was going to be in the area and he'd love to get together if she had time. And They had dated a bit back in high school. In fact, they went to the junior prom together. Turned out later, he'd had a crush on her ever since then. And he was not going to be in the area. He was coming to the area, hoping to see her. I performed their wedding on their back porch last April. And when they sent out the wedding invitations, it had a black and white picture of the two of them, all dressed up for the junior prom, 59 years earlier. Sometimes the pieces have to be moved into place. So the hallway is a busy time in your life. It might start with panic, blame, shame, anger, fear, but eventually comes acceptance. This is where I am now. And then surrender. This must be happening for me, so I'll look for the good. I know God is in every situation. Then use your spiritual practices, forgiveness, prayer. Let others pray for you. You can borrow their faith. And when you're ready to move forward, invoke the spiritual laws you know. You are a divine being put on earth with all the attributes of God. You are the creator of your experience. Your thoughts attract whatever you want or need. And the best news is, each of us has a higher self that never sleeps. It is always working on your behalf. So you can work with that divine self or not. We live either by design or default. It's worth it, though, to stay awake, to pay attention, to use all the spiritual tools at your disposal, knowing that there may be delays or surprises, and even those have divine purposes. There are no victims, only volunteers. Our souls volunteered for spiritual growth in this human lifetime, and being in the hallway is an opportunity for that growth. God is in every circumstance. Good is in every circumstance, and your good is waiting behind the next door. Thanks so much for having me here. It's really fun. I want to thank you for joining us today. I am so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask you to go to our website. Once there, click on the Contribute button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to the world. I would also ask you to please share this message 
with anyone you feel might benefit. Again, I want to thank you for joining me and the Agape community as together we bring joy to life.